So here's a question for everyone. What's your first impression when you hear an anime that you've been extremely excited for is going to be using 3D CG? A majority of you might be thinking about slow frame rates, poorly constructed facial features or reactions, or even more specifically and recently, this. There's a lot to be said about CG animation in Japan, but most of the time it's defined as an extremely weak area in their technology, used only to cut costs and speed up production. For every post I see saying, there's some good CG out there, I see a handful more saying, Japan sucks at CG animation. Probably all from people that only saw Berserk and Ajin, but there's a lot to be appreciated in the CG that Japan can get right, and there's a good selection of great CG from Japanese anime. Our journey begins in Nanto City, Japan, where the headquarters of Studio PA Works is located. One of the best examples of amazing 3D animation in Japan comes from PA Works and their in-house CG studio, PAX. While PAX didn't meet legal establishment until mid-2014, they still worked together on PA Works series prior to that. Look at these fish from Nagi no Asukara. Now look at this. Look at this crane from Nagi no Asukara. Now look at this. Focus on this object from the first Shiro Bako opening. What object in particular do you ask? It's the spinning top on the dashboard of this car. This top appears later on in the special Shiro Bako episode, Exodus. While we're on the subject of the Shiro Bako opening, take a look at this piece from the second opening when Miyamori Aoi's car rides by and we cut to the interior of the car. Unless you were really paying attention, just watching the scene extremely quickly, you may have missed that the cars here are in fact CG. Another studio with the privilege of having an in-house CG animation team is UFO Table, with UFO Table Digital Team. It's easy to get lost in the visuals of their works from the past, like Kara no Kyokai, Fate, or Tales of Zestiria the Cross. Zestiria strikes an amazing balance between 3D and 2D animation in a load of its scenes, some of the best examples from the series I can think of are the battles against Aizen that Sore has to fight in episodes 8 and 9. The blending of Sore, his backgrounds, and Aizen is exactly what UFO Table excels at. From the head-on attacks Sore unleashes to the powerful fireballs Aizen prepares, everything blends perfectly. When we get into episode 9, we get to see this play out again with a totally different color scheme. Episode 8's battle against Aizen primarily used colors close to red in the spectrum, while episode 9's battle after Miklio joins the fray adds blue into the mix. While Aizen still surrounds his 3D body around red CG clouds, Sore and Miklio are surrounded in a traditionally unlimited budget works blue aura and after their Azure Assault pierces through Aizen's fireball and eventually through Aizen himself, there's no jarring transitions. The Azure Assault, which begins its cast in simple 2D, culminates in UFO Table's beautiful, digitally rendered 3D style effects, character models, and object models mixing with their 2D artwork to create a work of magic. Camera movements can also add to the beauty of well-done CG, such as many of the fights in the Kara no Kyokai series. I'll let the clip speak for this one, since you've probably heard enough of me talking about UFO Table already. So why are two studios that have in-house 3D animation studios important when most other studios don't really have them? The short answer is to prove that not all CG is bad in anime. But the long answer is that there can still be good CG from studios that don't have in-house 3D studios or bad CG from those that do. UFO Table did make God Eater after all. But this brings us full circle back to a little studio named Gemba. You probably won't find too much on them if you just Google their name on a Google domain that isn't google.jp, or you don't Google Gemba CG Animation, other than the fact that they worked on Berserk 2016 and will be working on Berserk 2017. That's right, Gemba's the 3D animation studio behind the clang. But Gemba isn't exactly new to the world of 3D animation. They've been around since the mid-2000s, providing CG work for Death Note The Last Name, the trailer of the first Bayonetta game, and the Yokai Watch movies. Their most recent job was CG production cooperation on the Gantt Zero film alongside Digital Frontier. 
In style, Gantt Zero is very similar to Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, making it an extremely presentable film that does its job very well. Yokai Watch's movie even has some presentable moments, and while it doesn't have top of the line CG, it's still better than whatever Berserk had to offer. So what happened with Berserk? When even in the Pokemon movie Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel, where Gemba was the primary producer for the CG, it still looked amazing. The answer is, simply, it wasn't completely Gemba's fault. The key difference is that the amount of cooperation put into Berserk compared to the other titles is vastly larger. While I don't have a completely definitive answer as to where Gemba screwed up, seeing that they had cooperation from three studios on CG and two studios on 3D modeling may have led to some complications. Take into account this quote from producer Rayo Kurosu. For this series, we're trying to do something new. The director is a 2D animator, so what goes on in his mind and what he puts on storyboard is all in 2D. From there, it's all about choosing which tool to use between full CG animation, traditional 2D, or a hybrid of the two. The director and the 2D and 3D studios will meet and discuss what to use when, depending upon what we're trying to accomplish with each scene. Kurosu goes on to say that we're differentiating what is being broadcast and what will make it to Blu-ray. For broadcasting in Japan, there will be certain restrictions we have to abide by. Although MBS is known for being more liberal about what they restrict, they previously broadcast Full Metal Alchemist, and their principle is that if there's a reason to depict the violence, then they want to include it. We want to show that some things in life aren't pretty, and I think that's very important not only in animation, but across all mediums. Maybe all along, with the changes being made to the Blu-ray edition of the series, which is getting rid of some of the CG segments altogether, the production staff pushed the series forward without much worry for the quality of the broadcast version. A big elephant in the room comes down to Japan wants to make their 3D animation look traditionally 2D animated. But whatever the reasons are for certain shows looking like shit in CG, whether it be that or something else, we should always be aware that there are good instances of CG out there, and to be open to the idea that it can work, even if there is an overabundance of bad CG. In cases like Berserk, I don't really see much improvement with how 2017's already looking, but we can hope for more Gantz Zero quality anime. PA Works and UFO Table will only get better with their 3D teams. Hopefully they begin standing as examples to other studios and Berserk as an example of what not to do.